Krishna Krishna Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmada Sayatam Vyadi Taratas Chati Suvigyaswara Janmada Sayatam Vyadi Taratas Chati Suvigyaswara Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyantiyat Sudaya Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyantiyat Sudaya Pedro Varim with that, a tabin of my yoga, Tratis Sagumus Namna Swena Sada Nirastaku Hakam Satyang Param de Mahi. Oh, my Lord, she Christian son of us. Oh, pervading personality. Oh, pervading personality. Are from my respectful basis. I have my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. The creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is, uh, he is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He's directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he's independent because there's no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there's no other cause beyond him. Is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji? Is she only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji? The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed As into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representation. As one is bewildered by the original of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Or the water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual although they are unreal. Appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental world. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him for he is the 
absolute truth. I meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitra Vodra. Dharma Projita Kaitra Vodra. Paramo Nirmatsa Nam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsa Nam Satam. Vidyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Vidyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulan. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Shrimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krita. Shrimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krita. Kimva Purir Ishwaraha. Kimva Purir Ishwaraha. Sadhya Vridhi Avarudhyate Tra. Sadhya Vridhi Avarudhyate Tra. Kriti Vihesha Susubhistakshana. Kriti Vihesha Susubhistakshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from the illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is the reality distinguished from the illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam can compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. But what is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established with his heart. Nigama kalpatara galitam phalam. Nigama kalpatara galitam phalam. Sukhamukhat amrita dravya samyatam. Sukhamukhat amrita dravya samyatam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Mohur aho raska bhuvi bhavukaha. Mohur aho raska bhuvi bhavukaha. Oh, expert and thoughtful men, relish me my bhagavatam. Oh, expert and thoughtful men, relish me my bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. The mature fruit of the desire tree. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Kunya. Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Vidyan Taksto Hiya Bhadrani. Vidyan Taksto Hiya Bhadrani. Vidu Nati Suhit Satam. Vidu Nati Suhit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. This is self-righteous activity. It is of the wildest activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta praesu bhadresu. Nasta praesu bhadresu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhaktir bhavati naistaki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. And from the devotee. And from the devotee. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in his devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kama lobha dayas chaye. Kama lobha dayas chaye. Cheta itarana vidam. Stitvan Satve Prasiddhati. Stitvan Satve Prasiddhati. By development of devotional service, by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Material lusts and avarice. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavad bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavad bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavad tattva vigyanam. Bhagavad tattva vigyanam. Mukta sangha sijayate. Mukta sangha sijayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Siyante chasya karmani. Siyante sarvakarmani. Drusta edvat manishwari. Drusta edvat manishwari. Thus bhakti yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. 
That's the bhakti of the service of the of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of, of samsayam samagram. And enables to come at once to the stage of samsayam samagram. Understanding of the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Understanding the supreme absolute truth personality. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee. Therefore, only by hearing. From Krishna, from his devotees. In Krishna consciousness. In Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 18, Verse Number 5. Tabat <clears throat> Kalir Naprabhavet. Tavat kali na prabhavet Pravisto piha sarvata Pravisto piha sarvata Yavat iso mahan urviyam Yavat iso mahan urviyam Abhiman yaiva abhiman yava ekarat Abhiman yava ekarat Translation by Srila Prabhupada As long as the great powerful son of Abhimanyu remains the emperor of the world, there is no chance that the personality of Kali will flourish. Yeah. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. As we have already explained, the personality of Kali had entered the jurisdiction of this earth long ago, and he was looking for an opportunity to spread his influence all over the world. But he could not do so satisfactorily <coughs> due to the presence of Maharaj Parikshit. That is the way of good government. The disturbing elements like the personality of Kali will always try to extend their nefarious activities, but it is the duty of the able state to check them by all means. Although Maharaj Prikshit allotted places for the personality of Kali, at the same time he gave no chance for the citizens to be swayed by the personality of Kali. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So good governance is all about helping people understand Krishna correctly and to be able to protect the people from being influenced by the personality of Kali. <clears throat> now, that's not an easy thing to do because the personality of Kali is very persistent and uh, the devotees have to be always vigilant. Vigilant means they have to be uh, very meticulous about following the rules and regulations, and chanting the rounds, regularly taking part in the program, and also uh, hearing and chanting. So if we do these things, then uh, Kali has no room to enter into the lives of devotees. But, if we become negligent. Negligent means we know what's right to do, but because of laziness, because of spiritual weakness, we don't do the right thing. Then Kali enters. And how does Kali, the personality of Kali enter? Uh, it's through subtle forms of desire. And eventually it, the Everything goes from the subtle to the gross, and all of a sudden we're overwhelmed with a plethora of material desires, and uh, we're so much attracted that we cannot stop ourselves from uh, thinking, feeling, and then eventually willing, and actually then we uh, try to satisfy those desires, and uh, we become entrapped. Is uh, that entrapment is as soon as we become convinced that without 
attaining certain desires, we will never be happy. Therefore, we uh, in, in frantically go after those desires, and in the meantime, we commit sinful activities and we get caught by personality of Kali. So, the the panacea or the the cure for for this type of uh, slippery slope from subtle desires to gross desires to uh, inability to control one's mind and senses and then to actually proactively try and satisfy those desires and then get caught uh, can be stopped if one has an interest in Brahma Jigyasa. Now what is Brahma Jigyasa? That is, Prabhupada describes it as a spiritual urge. Just like someone might, might have a, a material urge for sense gratification, there's such a thing as a spiritual urge also, and that is for enlightenment, for knowledge, for uh, trying to understand what is my position in this world? What am I actually meant to do? Now everyone is trying to convince you, well, you should do this or you should do that. But what am I really meant to do? See? So that urge or spiritual urge begins by an inquiry. Uh, it actually begins by association. Uh, when we feel a little bit attracted to something and then we want to associate with people who are uh, engaged in a certain activity that looks attractive to us. But the real thing is this Brahma Jigyasa or inquiry about what is the absolute truth. And this spiritual urge or inquiry uh, it becomes successful by three things. One, knowledge. Two, uh, it is renunciation, and three, full engagement and devotional service. So these are the three corollary effects of Brahma Jigyasa, or this urge, spiritual urge to understand what is my, who am I exactly? Why am I suffering? What is my position? What, what is the purpose of life? How do I attain that purpose? All these questions are there in the mind of a person who's serious. Of course, none of these questions are in the minds of people who are not serious. They're not, they're not asking these questions. They're just going, uh, going with, the f uh, with, the, with the flow. Uh, other people are going to the nightclub and they're trying to make money and they're talking about the stock market and investments. And they're not interested in Krishna consciousness. They're not interested in Srimad Bhagavatam. They're not interested in Bhagavad Gita. They're interested in the stock market. They're interested in vacations. They're interested in increasing their wealth, they're interested in buying things and accumulating things, they're interested in prestige, in clothes, in jewelry. You go around Seattle, you'll see there's jewelry shops, there's restaurants, there's department stores, there's box stores, and there are nightclubs and bars. That's where the people are going. They're running into those places, right? They're attracted to those places. They're gambling institutions. There are houses of prostitution. All these things are there because it's uh, panding or, or playing toward the uh, illicit desires of people. If, if, if no one goes into those places, they would go bankrupt. If no one goes to the casino, if no one goes to the movie house, if no one goes to the, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Disneyland, if no one goes to this thing or that, then, then those places go bankrupt. But obviously they're not going bankrupt. The casinos are getting bigger and bigger. Uh, the movie houses used to be, uh, when I was a kid, you go to a, a movie, it's only one screen. Now Nowadays they have, you know, 
10 or 15 different rooms, and each room has its own big screen and its own projector, and they're showing multiple movies. You know, a person could end up staying in a movie house 24 hours nowadays. <laughs> See? And, and if you're too lazy, you just uh, pay extra money, you get a television or a vi video, and, and uh, you, can, uh, you can watch uh, movies all day long, all night long, you know, and, and so forth. So these places, these, you know, Netflix and this and that, they're all businesses based on pandering to the material desires of the people. And they're not going bankrupt. They're, they're increasing. And then, and then somebody makes an app how you, can, uh, uh, how, how you can buy stocks in a matter of seconds. So everyone buys the app because they want to be the fastest one to buy a stock when it's going up or down or buy or sell. So, and, and those things are expensive. So people make, uh, and then social media, you know, let's connect people. Actually, it's, let's connect everyone to nonsense and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, waste of time. That's what, that's what that's all about. So everyone is rushing to satisfy their desires. And if you can make a product that will help people satisfy their desires, it'll be a big success their material desires. But Brahma Jigyasa is something different, this inquiry. Where did I come from? Where am I now? Where am I supposed to go? What is the purpose of life? Why am I suffering? Uh, how can I end this suffering? And uh, what is this whole idea, you know, birth, all days, disease, and death? I, I, don't, I, I don't remember choosing all these things. So when a person starts asking serious questions, then they develop a certain uh, quest for uh, ans getting answers to those questions. That's called Brahma Jigyasa. And then uh, there's three steps to it. There's knowledge, there's renunciation, and then there's pure devotional service. Okay. So knowledge means Understanding everything about Brahman. Brahman means It's three steps of understanding the Supreme Brahman. There's the Brahma Jyoti or the effulgence emanating from the body of the Lord in the spiritual world and reflected off the sun into the material world. And then there's the, but that's an impersonal understanding of God. And then there's Paramatma, the all-present uh, expansion of God is Paramatma in the heart of every living entity and in every atom of the universe. And then there's Krishna, the origin of the material world, the origin of Brahma Jyoti, the origin of all the, par the billions and billions of Paramatmas, and the origin of everything, including the spiritual world, Vaikuntha, Goloka, and so forth. So that's called inquiry into everything of Brahman, or knowledge of everything concerned with uh, Brahman. Brahman is not only the Brahma Jyoti. Brahman is all what I just described. And then renunciation means detachment from material affection. Just like I remember when I was a little kid, uh, I had a favorite, uh, a favorite, uh, uh, what's it called? It's a, a, uh, a, f a favorite cloth that I, that I had to have in order to sleep. I wouldn't go to sleep without it. Right? And if I didn't have it, it was not a cloth. It was a, it was a blanket. It was, but it was a special blanket for me. And if I didn't have that blanket, I, w I wouldn't go to sleep. I, I, I would complain. I remember that. So that's the type of material affection. So another person has material affection for the dog. So the dog goes to bed with the person, right in their bed, this dog's sleeping with them. And all the germs are coming out of the anus of the dog, and the dog uh, is uh, uh, full of uh, bugs and things like that. And it's going all over the place into the bed. And they love that, they love that, they love that dog. And somebody, I knew somebody who had 
a big lizard, a big lizard, and it was really ugly, and it lived in the apartment of this uh, person, and it would be in the bed of the person at night. Can you imagine that? It, it, it was like this big. It was like a horrible lizard, and they, they were feeding it, and oh, it's horrible, but they were attached, see, and they had material affection, you see. So renunciation means detachment from material affection. Just like somebody has attachment to the body or to the extension of the body in the form of uh, family members and cousins and aunties and uncles. One time Prabhupada was a guest in this one gentleman's house in South India and the gentleman wanted to introduce all the members of his family. He had a big family, big extended family. They lived all in the same, uh, in, like, uh, uh, neighborhood. So he said, Prabhupada, can I introduce my family to you? He said, yeah, okay. So he brought his wife and his uh, two sons and his, uh, uh, well, he just brought his wife at first. He said, this is my wife. Prabhupada said, Hare Krishna, how are you? Glad to meet you. And then he said, okay, so Prabhupada, I'm going to bring a few more family members. So he comes back with his two sons and daughter and their uh, spouses. So he said, this is my first son, and this is his wife, Hare Krishna. This is my second son, and this is his wife, Hare Krishna. This is my uh, daughter, and that's her husband, Hare Krishna. He said, now I'll bring in the children. So he goes out, comes back in, and said, "These are the three children of my first of my first son." And, and he said, "Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna." And these are the two kids of my second son, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. And these are the uh, this is the child of my uh, my daughter and her husband, Hari Krishna. He said, "He said I, I'll bring a few more people now." So he comes in with his three brothers and two sisters. <laughs> so, so it keeps going on and on. And Prabhupada, he said, oh, now Prabhupada, I'm going to bring in some of my uh, grandchildren. You know, so he goes out and Prabhupada says, and now I'm going to explain. And Prabhupada whispers to one of the and now I'm going to present my sex life to you. <laughs> so that's what, what that's what it was, right? He, was, he kept he produced, and then the others produced, and then the cousins and aunties and uncles they all produced, and it's a it's a saga of sex, basically, right? <laughs> so, uh, and, and and everything is based on the body, right? Uh, bodily affection. So. And, and, it, and when something is based on the body, material affection is based on the body, first it starts with attraction, and then infatuation, and then so-called love, and then there's marriage, and then there's the honeymoon and, and ecstasy, and then coming back and just starting normal life, eating, sleeping, mating, defending, uh, and so forth. And then there's the first argument and anger. And then the argument continues. And there's anger and resentment. And uh, eventually becomes hatred. And and eventually there's divorce. So it started with the, the same person, right? There was infatuation, attraction, uh, attachment, and so-called I love you, and then uh, marriage, and honeymoon, and ecstasy, and then uh, getting back to a, a, the routine of life, working, eating, sleeping, mating, defending, all that, and then there's some difference of opinion, and there's an argument, and then there's uh, 
bitterness and resentment and hatred. And then the I love you becomes I hate you. And then there's divorce. This is something explained by Sankaracharya. <laughs> and he said, same person uh, evoked all these emotions, right? It's all based on the body. It's not, not body and the mind. It's not based on the soul. So this material affection is a very, uh, let's say, big stumbling block. Now, does that mean you can't uh, have affection for anyone or you can't love anyone? No. But what do you love? That's the question. Just like I knew this... Uh, there was this one family where the uh, wife had a terrible accident and was paralyzed. And of course the husband had to take care of her and, and relatives and a nurse. She, she was completely paralyzed. And eventually the husband divorced her, put her in some home, uh, nursing home or something, and just got another wife. Why? Because there was love for the body, but not love for the soul. Right? Then there is another example I know of. There's a devotee family. The husband had a, had a debilita uh, debilitating disease that uh, made him eventually paralyzed. He couldn't even eat. And uh, he couldn't work anymore and make any money. So the wife took over and had to uh, like a baby, take care of him, change, change his clothes and bathe him and, and clothe him and, and, and so forth and feed him. And at the same time, she had to work. She also had to work. So she was like, you know, she had like two jobs. One was work and the other was taking care of an invalid, right, and making sure he was okay while she was away from the home. And she never left him and stayed always faithful to him, right up until he died. So, here we see, uh, now, and she, but there, she was a devotee and her husband was a devotee, so there was actually some love there, uh, but for the soul, not for the body. So here we have two examples. One is love for the body, and when the body doesn't function anymore, they get, they, you know, they put it in a nursing home and, and get some other body, right? And, and in this second case where uh, the wife remained always faithful to her husband, and served him in every way and sacrificed everything to make him comfortable until he died. Okay, so this material affection is for the body. It's not actually for the soul. Just like uh, my mother had, uh, my mother was orphaned, was a young girl, and, her whole family was massacred, well, most of her family was massacred. But later on, by s different miracles, she uh, uh, was rescued. And uh, eventually she ended up in an orphanage, and then, and then she was discovered in the orphanage by some distant cousins and eventually came to the United States. And, uh, and then there were a few distant relatives that uh, survived the massacres, and, and, and so she was reuni reunited with some of her uh, extended family members, right? So she had one close uh, cousin, and, and we would go and visit him often, and one day they had a little argument, and uh, that her dear cousin never spoke to her again for the rest of her rest of her life. Never wanted to see her. You know, my, mom, my mom was devastated by it, but what could she do? So you see how this material affection is basically for the body, and it's a very, very dangerous thing. Uh, and, and as long as people don't have what's called atma-tattva, knowledge of the soul and its eternal relationship with Krishna, uh, it's tenuous, the, the, the bodily relationship is tenuous. Some things can go wrong and then you, the body doesn't function so well anymore and then someone says, well, I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be uh, hamstrung to 
taking care of this person for the rest of their life, so I'll put them in a nursing home and find another partner. Right? So these things are like, uh, or, or else uh, <laughs> there's another story where I had an, uh, an uncle who got very, very sick and was almost paralyzed. And, uh, and then, but he had some money, he had some wealth, and then different extended family members wanted to take care of him. And they were sort of competing for it. Why? Because they wanted to rip him off, which is what they did. The one that prevailed, the nastiest cousin, prevailed and ripped off all the money of the dying uh, uh, uncle, right? So <laughs> this is unbelievable, but this is what's happening, and it's all based on the bodies, no, no, no understanding of the soul. Even though people are Christians or Jews or Muslims, whatever, but when it comes to money, oh my God, everyone forgets all those things. <laughs> And this is a common thing in India, with members of the family fighting with each other over inheritance, and it becomes really nasty. You know, I mean, I've had to help several devotees that were in a situation like that. But it's not just uh, in India, it's all over the place, see? Because we're worshiping Krishna, but most people are worshiping rupia. There's Krishna and there's rupia, right? And rupiah is another god. <laughs> so uh, this material affection is a dangerous thing, and so dangerous that Arjuna told Krishna, I'm not going to follow what you say. He said that because of material affection, false bodily attachment to his relatives and to his own brothers. He couldn't, he couldn't fathom the idea that at the end of the war, People on both sides, on both sides of his family were in the war, right? People on both sides would die, and he, he didn't see how he would be happy if he killed the, the Kauravas or if he saw his uh, brothers killed. So he refused Krishna's order, not on any valid uh, uh, platform. It was just based on his bodily affection. So. First is uh, knowledge of Brahman. And then second is uh, the uh, renunciation. But renunciation means renouncing material affection. And I think we've explained now, we're not talking about genuine affection. We're talking about m based on the soul, but material affection, right? And then the third, uh, Colliery of uh, Brahma Jigyasa is pure devotional service, which is the goal of life. So that's called Brahma Jigyasa, or the, the beginning is the spiritual urge, this feeling, I'm missing something in my life. There's so many questions I have, they're unanswered. When I was younger, I didn't have these questions. I thought I would live forever, and I'd be able to do anything. I could even become president of the United States if I wanted to, you know. But little by little, I realized as I got older that uh, I'm highly limited and, and all those dreams in my younger age, I haven't accomplished any of them or hardly any of them. And it doesn't look I, like I will. And, and I feel frustrated. And, 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 and why is this happening to me? And, and why did this happen? Why did this family member die? And why did I fail in this uh, business or this thing? So you see, as time, life goes on, the reality of life as explained by Krishna, anityam asukam lokam, or dukalayam asasvatam. The world is a temporary place and it's full of misery. Even a happiness ends up in misery. See? So, therefore, this Brahma Jigyasa, this awakening and, and this urge, spiritual urge for understanding what is my real position in this world is fundamental. And uh, Prabhupada explains this in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 9, verse number 44, where he says that uh, the Ganis, Yogis, and Bhaktas, 
They're all trying to enter into the spiritual realm or the spiritual world. But the jnanis and yogis, they can only achieve impersonal Brahman realization. They don't go beyond that. And then they, most of them fall down from that position. But the bhaktas, the devotees, they enter into the spiritual planets known as the vaikuntas. Vaikunta means no anxiety there. What is the symptom in the material world? Anxiety, fear, not knowing what's going to happen, always being worried. You know, so uh, just like a grandmother, she's always worried about, you know, uh, what's going to happen to my kids? What's going to happen to their kids? And what's going to happen to the, the third generation? So. <laughs> She's always worried about somebody or something, right? And something's always going wrong. So, okay, so uh, devotees, uh, Prabhupada explains, in these spiritual planets, the Supreme Lord is Narayana predominates, and the healthy, unconditioned living beings live there by rendering loving service to the Lord in the capacity of servant, friend, parents, and fiancé. There, the unconditioned living beings enjoy life in full freedom with the Lord, whereas the impersonalist jnanis and yogis enter into the impersonal glowing effulgence of the Vaikuntha planets. The Vaikuntha planets are all self-illuminating like the sun, and the rays of the Vaikuntha planets are called the Brahma Jyoti. The Brahma Jyoti is spread unlimitedly, and the material world is but a covered portion of an insignificant part of the same Brahma Jyoti. This covering is temporary, and therefore is it, a sort, it is a sort of illusion. Bhismadeva, as a pure devotee of the Lord, entered the spiritual realm in one of the Vaikuntha planets where the Lord, in his eternal form of Parthasarati, predominates over the unconditioned living beings who are constantly engaged in the service of the Lord. The love and affection which bind the Lord and devotee are exhibited in the case of Bhismadeva. Bismadeva never forgot the Lord in his transcendental feature as the, as the Parthasarati, or the driver of the, of the uh, chariot of Arjuna. And the Lord was present personally before Bismadeva while he was passing to the transcendental world. That is the highest perfection of life. Okay, so this is what we're aiming to, for. And, and I'm going to continue talking about this a little bit more. I spoke about it a little bit yesterday how to die successfully. People say, what? Successfully? What's successful about death? <laughs> no. Death is actually the most important moment in life. Because that is the moment where everything we learned in life is tested to see if we actually understood or not. So death is actually the most important moment Okay, we'll stop right there. I'm going to talk a lot more about this. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Are there any questions? Hey, uh, just a, a comment. And somewhere Bhakti Mutaku says that it's one song. Then this material world, this material world whatever pleasure we get in this material world is, is, is mixed pleasure. There's never unmixed pleasure. It's all mixed pleasure. There's a pleasure, but suffering. What? There's a pleasure, yeah. but along with that pleasure, there's so many problems and suffering. Yes. No matter what kind of pleasure you get, it's always side by side. Yeah, well, we've, we've talked about that also. That is, the fifth chapter, Prabhupada explains that sense gratification is always followed by misery. <laughs> like Krishna said, the, it's the law of nature. Yeah, he's some superstar, Boga, Dukha, Yoneja, Eva. You can read that first, Maharaj. Very, this is well in this context. Yeah, he's some superstar, Boga, Dukha, Yoneja, Eva. Adianta Vanta Kantea. That's very, very relevant to our topic today. In my opinion, <laughs> yes, it is relevant. <laughs> the Christian says that they hear some stuff like 
I think it's, I can't remember which chapter. Is that three chapters, third chapter, five? Okay. Um, if you have a Bhagavad index. Mm -hmm. The more one is addicted to material pleasures, the more he is entrapped by material miseries. This is. Yehi sparsas, sparsas jaboga dukkha yonaya evate adi antavanta konteya na te su ramante buddha. Which chapter and text? Fifth chapter, 22nd verse. And it says, to read every day, it's amazing verse. An intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery, which are due to contact with the material senses, O son of Kunti. Such pleasures have a beginning and an end, and so the wise man does not delight in them. There you are. And right at the end it says, the more one is addicted to material pleasures, the more he is entrapped by material miseries. Law of nature, like the law of gravity. But no one would accept it. She would say, well, no, no, I don't know. <laughs> That's too negative, I man. I, I want to be positive. You know, I want to think that I can be happy. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't believe that. What's what's Prabhupada's uh, proposal there? He says material sense pleasures are due to the contact of the material senses, which are all temporary, because the body itself is temporary. A liberated soul is not interested in anything which is temporary, knowing well the joys of transcendental pleasures. How can a liberated soul agree to enjoy false pleasure? In the Padma Purana, it is said, "Ramante yogino nante satyanande." Chidatmani, iti rama padena so param brahma vidyate. The mystics derive unlimited transcendental pleasures from the absolute truth, and therefore the supreme absolute truth, the personality God, it is also known as Rama. In Srimad Bhagavatam, also 5.5.1, 5, 5. it is said, Nayam dehao deha bhajam nir loke kastan kamam arhate vidbhujam te. Tapo divyam putraka yena satvam sudayed yasmad brahma sokyam twanantam. My dear sons, this is Lord Rishabhadev speaking to his hundred sons, there is no reason to labor very hard for sense pleasure while in this human form of life. Such pleasures are available to the stool eaters, the hogs and pigs. Rather, you should undergo penances in this life by which your existence will be purified. And as a result, you will be able to enjoy unlimited transcendental bliss. Therefore, those who are true yogis or learned transcendentalists are not attracted by sense pleasures, which are the causes of continuous material existence. The more one is addicted to material pleasures, the more he is entrapped by material miseries. There you go. Ouch. That's the truth. Okay, any other questions? If not, we'll stop there. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.